And I hope and pray we do cherish the name of Jesus as we are focusing on Him always and especially during Christmas. Let's, continuing, let's continue to do just that by you opening up to Mark, the first chapter. That will keep our focus on Jesus certainly this morning. Mark 1, 1 through 8 will allow us to do that. So I'll give you just a few moments to turn to that passage. It'll be up here as well. Whatever method will allow you to have God's Word in front of you. I'm giving you a moment to stand there. Ask everyone who is able to join with me in standing in honor of reading God's Word this morning. Mark's Gospel starts this way. The beginning of the good news, the beginning of the Gospel, about Jesus the Messiah the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for Him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to Him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And we pray for God's blessing on the reading and hearing of His Word this morning. You may be seated. I sat down in my chair next to one of my buddies, and as we were talking, the teacher handed out our textbook for the year. In my pre-algebra math class in seventh grade, the teacher handed out the book, and as I, as I was looking through that book and talking to my buddy, halfway paying attention to the teacher, we were hearing our first assignment, which was to cover our books. Was that an assignment for some people? You had to cover your textbook to keep it safe. That uh, was your first homework assignment. I always could get 100 on that one. <laughs> I remember talking to my friend and flipping through the book and hearing this instruction. I kind of knew the drill of what was happening the first day of class, and as I flipped through this math book, I came to the end, and I saw answers, a lot of answers, and I was floored. I asked him, I said, is this, you have this in your book? Do I have a secret book here? Does the teacher know this is here? I mean, I noticed that they were only the odd answers, so I was like, is this, is this a sick joke? The teacher's only going to assign even-numbered questions the whole year, or does the teacher know I have this book? Am I allowed to have this information? The answers are here. I was blown away by that. I had a lot of emotions and questions going through my seventh grade mind. All the answers were right in front of me, and I thought I had found the answers. I was thrilled to think that only having the answers would be what I would need, as if having the answers themselves by themselves was going to be enough. I had to learn a hard lesson the first few homework assignments. And speaking of school, you have a homework assignment of sorts to be prayerful about how you're going to engage 2018 with the theme that I've disclosed to you in the entire church body. And now that you have heard what that theme is, biblically-based believers, growing the community of believers, you have some, some homework to be praying about that, your involvement within it, because just like the answers in the back of my math book, having the answers, just simply knowing what it's going to be about isn't going to be worth very much by themselves. Jesus exemplified how process and journey are the way of discipleship, not just having the right answers. Mark emphasized what Jesus did, not just what he said. I like that. There was a lot more emphasis on what Jesus did in Mark's gospel. But before we can place sole emphasis on Jesus, we have to recognize that there is some preparation needed. And we're going to do that. Mark is giving account of Jesus Christ, of the good news, of the gospel. He says it plainly, first verse, so 
I'm glad when it's that straightforward. He's giving an account by first reflecting on what was said centuries prior to Jesus being born about preparation and people being prepared for the arrival of the Messiah. And then Mark reflects on how John the Baptist was the fulfillment of that prophecy. And he talks about that. And we need to know that understanding the ministry of Jesus has to begin like Mark did with understanding the Old Testament. What Malachi and Isaiah prophesied about applies to Jesus, God's Son. The passages that Mark cites speak of the messenger, the desert, and the Lord, each of which are stressed in these verses that we just read. So we see how preparation was preceding Jesus and how Mark was describing how the preparation was fulfilled in John the Baptist. A little side note, a little FYI, just to make sure we're all on the same page. John practiced baptizing those who came to him and repented of their sins. And that was the hallmark of his ministry. That's why he became known as John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. That's where his name came from. And let's also remember that baptism is a sign of repentance. It's an outward expression of one repenting. So we need to make sure we know what repentance is, is as well. It's a turning around, a 180 degree turn, deliberately turning from sin to righteousness and confessing one's sins to God Almighty and asking Him to forgive them through Jesus Christ. And in doing so, one has repented and one is also baptized when that is initially done in life to show everyone what has happened within one's life. Everything about John the Baptist is about preparing the way for the Holy One. That's what John the Baptist was about. Everything was about preparing the way for the Messiah, Jesus. It would have been easy for Mark just to jump right in the thick of Jesus' earthly ministry, just to get to the meat of the matter. Listen to what Jesus was saying, listen to what He was doing, but he, He knew that background preparation was needed. You see, readers needed to know that people were anticipating the Messiah. This was not something that Mark had to drum up and say, oh, you remember when this was prophesied about? No, people were anticipating the Messiah. They were ready for a revival of prophecy. And so when they heard this message, when preparation was before them, they were ready for what was to come. We know that celebrating Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But we can't jump straight to that. We need to be prepared to encounter Jesus, to celebrate His birth at Christmas. Lamar Williamson says it this way. He says, The Gospel of Mark presupposes that the best way to bear witness to the coming kingdom of God and to challenge readers to faithful discipleship is to tell the story of Jesus. And I will add that telling the story of Jesus certainly includes understanding the preparation needed prior to Jesus' arrival. Having the stage set to understand Jesus' earthly ministry is utmost importance to be prepared to encounter Jesus' ministry then and now. Because you cannot casually encounter Jesus. You cannot casually encounter Jesus. This passage of Scripture provides the understanding of how we're to encounter Jesus, the Christ. There are three major points of emphasis in this passage. One is expectancy, preparedness. That is a major point of emphasis. Second, repentance. And third, the coming one. Being ready for Jesus. Williamson says we need to understand these themes as such. Expectancy as rooted in the scriptural promises, as we've noted, repentance as a response to what the hearers are to do, and the coming one as to what God will do through Jesus. Expectancy is what this Sunday of Advent is all about, being prepared to encounter the celebration of Jesus' birth being born. 
John the Baptist's message caused great excitement. There was a desire from the Jews for a revival of prophecy. And since the people expected something from God, they received the message because they were prepared for it. I need us to hear that this morning. The people expected something from God, and since they received the me- and because they received the message, it's because they were prepared for it. They expected the message, they expected to receive something from God, and they received it because they were prepared for it. Does that make sense? I want us to to bring this home and we can reflect on the transition period. Just a few years ago as a church, we were reflecting on how Jesus Christ has been at work and asking Him how you will continue to be at work, Jesus. And great excitement was built and it came upon reflection and preparation. Excitement grew because there was an overwhelming desire for ministry revival to occur. Amen? Is that fair? And so there has been an overwhelming acceptance of all that has happened in that transformation process, the values, the priorities that were brought before us as a church because we were preparing ourselves to encounter Jesus. We were prayerfully reflecting on what would you have us do, God? How can we be prepared for tomorrow and the years to come? And so when those days and years have come, we've accepted them because we expected it, which came from preparation. Prayerfully and carefully, I might add. Hopefully that means you're also prepared to encounter Jesus Christ in 2018 and beyond. Because conversation is continuing to happen, and the conversation that is continuing to happen, the preparation that continually builds, requires faith and will certainly require everyone to exercise, exercise their faith. Faith in and of itself, by itself as just knowledge is only a mental exercise. Having the answers of how to be prepared in and of themselves aren't worth much. We have to put them into practice. We have to exercise our faith. And so let's test our preparedness for how God will be at work throughout the church and in in everyone's individual life as well in this coming year. I want to ask you a couple of questions and just have you answer them to yourself. Are you excited for the opportunities that are ahead of us as the church? Or do they cause you stress? When you think about how God is at work, how He has shown us how to be prepared, how to expect His goodness to prevail, and how we are going to encounter Him, and then we do it, and how that is going to continue, does that cause you great excitement or stress? And you need the tums. Also, Are you excited to celebrate Christmas? We have Advent readings, the the candles, the trees, the decorations, the Christmas parties, all of those things, celebrating Jesus' birth. Are you excited to encounter Jesus as we celebrate his birth? Or do the schedules you have to juggle, the gifts you have to buy, the times you have to clean up the house cloud your ability to expect how to celebrate Jesus' birth this Christmas? The answers to these questions coincide with your answer to this question. Are you prepared to continue to experience Jesus in your life? We need to ask this morning, are you prepared to continually encounter Jesus Christ in your life individually and congregationally? We see how Mark pointed back to John the Baptist and said, see how he was the fulfillment of prophecy? The things you were expecting, the way you were prepared for the Messiah, he's the fulfillment of that. So get ready. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Jesus is coming. December 25th, we're going to celebrate his birth, but far more than just that, we are going to celebrate how he intersects our lives each and every day. Are you ready for that to continue? I remember one Christmas in particular as a child, I can't remember my age, a younger boy, and I was expecting a bicycle for Christmas. Most children, I think, expect a bicycle and enjoy receiving their first bike, maybe even one with training wheels. You're ready for that first bicycle, right? So I remember expecting a bicycle. I don't think that was a bad thing. You know, I I talked about it and kind of got in the cues 
in the right places that I could expect a, a bicycle. Parents go with me. So I understood that I could probably expect a bicycle, and then there it was, Christmas morning, the bicycle, sitting right in front of the fireplace. Thrilled, ecstatic. There's the bicycle. There's the gift I was expecting. So guess what I did all day Christmas Day? I rode that thing all day long. As soon as I was allowed to go outside, until I got called in, I was riding that bicycle as long as I could. Because, I mean, how silly would it have been to have expected a bicycle, received the gift, and then not do anything with it? That would have been a huge disappointment to my parents and really just been silly overall. I mean, I expected the bicycle, and there it sits. I received that gift that I expected. And then what if I just said, meh, never mind. It wouldn't make any sense. Preparation and expectancy go hand in hand with response, which in our case as disciples is repentance continually. See, being prepared, expecting what God is going to do, expecting encountering Jesus Christ goes hand in hand with how we respond to Jesus Christ when we do encounter Him, which is certainly <clears throat> repentance and continually living into the new life He promises. Repentance, as we've seen in this passage, was foundational for John's message. To be prepared for Jesus, to have expectations for Jesus, is to respond properly, which is repentance. The Greek word for repentance means to change one's mind, and behind it lies the Hebrew verb to turn around, that is to change one's heart. One's heart and one's mind is changed when one repents. And repentance comes from a readiness and openness, a humility to share with God one's deficiencies, one's sins, wrongdoings, and asking God to do something about it, knowing He will through His Son, Jesus Christ. And here in Mark's Gospel, the focus is on repentance as it prepares one for Jesus' arrival. As the words from John the Baptist prepared people to be ready for the coming one, we have to ask ourselves, are you prepared to encounter Jesus Christ this Christmas and beyond? Are you prepared? Is Jesus on your mind, in your hearts, in your thoughts? Are you expecting to encounter God this Christmas and beyond? Do you expect great things? Are you prepared for it? So when you do experience God, when you experience the presence of Jesus Christ, you know how to respond. Faithfully, prayerfully, carefully, vibrantly. This Advent, we're keeping the end in mind to properly celebrate Christmas, which includes being prepared and open for the arrival of Jesus. The opposite is also true. If you're not prepared to encounter Jesus, why would it make any sense to look at others who are prepared to encounter God and see movement in their lives and to understand what's going on. If you're not expecting to encounter God, why would you expect to understand how others are? We have to look at that. When I was in seventh grade, sitting in that math class, I was showing a high level of naivety and ignorance, thinking that all I needed was the answers as if that was all I needed. The goal is the journey. Being prepared for all stages of learning. How to do the work and how to complete the work. The answers were there to make sure I was on the right track. That's why the answers were there. What do you expect this Christmas? Ask yourselves, what are you prepared for this Christmas? Are you just worried about how you can prepare the, the food that you brought for lunch? Are you worried about how you're going to prepare your house this week for a guest? Are you worried about how you're going to juggle the work schedule you have leading up to Christmas? Are you, are you focused on everything but Jesus and how you're going to be prepared to sit still in His presence and encounter Him and be changed by it? Because you cannot casually encounter the presence of Jesus Christ. You cannot casually celebrate the birth of Jesus and the new life He gives to those who follow Him. Know this, as Pastor James McDonald puts it, involvement opens your eyes. So prepare yourself to be involved in God's activity this Christmas and beyond. 
be prepared to be amazed at what Jesus Christ is doing in your life and in the life of his body of believers as well. Go from here contemplating this. Are you so amazed by Jesus that you find life to be joy-filled and sometimes inexplicable? If not, are you really encountering Jesus? If not, what are you going to do about it? Prepare yourself for the coming one this Christmas. Prepare yourself for Jesus Christ the rest of your life. And expect great things as we celebrate who He is and the life He gives. Blessed be the name of the Lord.